God bless you in Jesus name. We are looking at how to deal with one of the most destructive and powerful spirits that is plaguing the church of God. Dealing with the spirit of Jezebel. Today we are taking the first teaching session which is called Introducing the Jezebel Spirit. Praise the Lord. So today let's go into this study as we see what this theme means. Of course, from reading your Bible, you will know that Jezebel only existed as a person in the Old Testament. But by the time you get to the book of Revelation, you find it Jezebel being referred to again. So to be clear to you that, that the Jezebel of that revelation is not the physical Jezebel of the Old Testament, but the spirit of that Jezebel. Now if you take your Bibles and we go to First Kings chapter 16, we we'll begin a small introduction into who Jezebel is from verse 31. Well, let's pick it from 30 to put it in proper context. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. The man got a very high mark in upsetting the living God. He got a singular qualification that he superseded all that went before him in doing evil before the Lord. The message you pick from that is that evil can be measured. Evil can be measured. And the measurement of the evil that a man has done will attract the commensurate punishment. At the end of the day, beloved, no evil can go unpunished. Verse 31. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, king of the Sidonians. He went and married a strange woman from a strange land. For those of you who are not married yet, you better pray well. If you had married already, God have mercy on you, He will help you. But if you are not there yet, it is advisable that you pray very hard. And the kind of prayer you pray is not the kind of prayer to say, I dreamt and I saw. No. Because the marriage ceremony is not going to be conducted in your dream. They will, you do it in the physical. If it is on the issue of who to marry, you pray until you begin to hear the voice of God. It is worth it. I feel sorry for some of the young girls and some of the young ladies, some of the young men of these days now. If the older ones found a church like this when they were younger, who told them the truth? They would not go into the kind of mess they went into. And the deliverance candidates of prayer city will have been less. When we were young Christians, so our pastors did not tell us most of the things we are telling you now. In, fact, in our church, nobody has ever preached any deliverance message. Nobody. And occasionally when the person who is prophesying begins to roll on the floor and the rapper went, goes to the east and the, and the buba who goes to the north, somebody will say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is hearing. Instead of us to say, I bind every okay. spirit of confusion. You Jezebel spirit, you serpentine spirit, get out. We didn't know. Some people got married on the basis of prophecy of somebody who was rolling like a serpent on the floor. God have mercy. So Ahab made a tragic error. He married a fire extinguisher. And that one dealt with him. And very soon he went and served Baal. He served Baal. Please try and note something about the worship of Baal. In the open glare of the public, the people of Baal will be committing open fornication because they believe if they don't do it, rain will not fall. So Ahab went into that. His wife influenced him and he began to worship Baal. Very, very sad. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he has built in Samaria. So Ahab eventually built an altar and a house for Baal. And Ahab made a grove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the king of Israel that were before him. So Jezebel was an outsider who seduced God's people into unfaithfulness and into idolatry. She introduced the worship of Baal into Israel, which she brought from her own country. 
She seduced the people of God into idolatry. And when we say idolatry, idolatry is anything you place before God or anything you place beside God. As you go into your Bible, you find more information about Jezebel. But by the time you get to Revelation chapter 2, verse 20, you read these strange words. Notwithstanding, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So in Revelation you read about her again. One of the greatest strongholds confronting believers is the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel's major operation is in the churches. Unfortunately, our activities remain unchecked in many churches. To be quite honest with you, they have captured so many churches. It is important to expose and destroy this power of Jezebel's spirit. The name of Jezebel means without cohabitation. That is, she refuses to live together or cohabit with anyone else. The spirit of Jezebel has no gender, though often referred to as a female personality. Who is Jezebel? She was the daughter of Edbal, the king of Sidon, dedicated to Baal and the wife of Ahab. She seduced Ahab and Israel to Hodom. The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of witchcraft, manipulation and control. Witchcraft is the operation, manipulation and control using any spirit different from the Holy Spirit. A witch is a person who uses magic for evil purposes or practices sorcery. A sorcerer is one that practices magic with the help of evil spirits. Witches excel in wickedness, and occultic practices are enhanced by the presence of witchcraft. So we've dealt with the personality of the spirit of Jezebel. So our first introduction to Jezebel was as a rebellious, dominating, and manipulative wife of Ahab, king of Israel. She forced 10 million Jews, apart from just 7,000 faithful, to bow down to Baal. This spirit of Jezebel, which is so common now, which is one of these terrible spirits of the last days, is causing many problems for Christians. The purpose of this study is to look deeply at how this spirit works, for it has so many Christians, so many believers under its grip. Jezebel killed prophets of God. She was a prophet killer. Now a prophet does not have to die physically before you declare him dead. Once the anointing of that prophet is swallowed, you can conclude that he's dead. Jezebel threatened the prophet of God. The evil power that this woman had that time was so much that even the man of God that called down fire out to pick race and run. And he got fed up with the ministry and said, well I'm tired of all this, oh God take my life, I want to go. So whatever power can make Elijah to say, I'm giving up, which we later find operating in the book of Revelation, is not the kind of thing you should joke with. Jezebel broke the law of Israel's God and did all kinds of other terrible atrocities. But listen very carefully so that you know where we are going and what, why we are going through this mountain of fire. The spirit of Jezebel is the one responsible for the worldliness and unseriousness of nowadays Christians. All the spirit of worldliness that have pervaded the churches, all the worldliness that is so serious that many cannot differentiate between the house of God and the house of idols. It is the spirit of Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel is the one responsible for the conversion of the house of God to entertainment centers now. When a sinner goes to the house of God, he goes there to repent and to change from his ways. But the spirit of Jezebel has converted most of these places to entertainment halls. So much so that musicians that need to go for two, three months deliverance are brought to the church to play music. All because he had changed the words of his music from I love you darling to I love you Jesus. The spirit of Jezebel is one responsible for all this production of this psychedelic these Koish pastors, Jericho's pastors, 
enticing hairstyle pastors. That is the manifestation of the spirit of Jezebel. And unfortunately, the young ones are beginning to think that this is the correct standard of Christianity. And they feel that this is where to go. That's why you find some young ones, they come to Mountain of Fire, they go for deliverance, they go for this deliverance, pray that prayer, they get admission into the universities. The strong man that does not want him to enter the university was buried. Now when they get into the campus, now they don't want to go to Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry Fellowship. They want to go to those places where they are painting and women are wearing trousers, are dancing disco music, because now they are free. They don't know that the strong man that was buried for them to enter, there is still another strong man that can eat up the certificate. It is the spirit of Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel is one responsible for the conversion of the house of God to a place of merchandise and to convert it to a fashion parade institution. And so by implication, if you come to a place like this and any time you don't have new clothes, you are not happy to come, Jezebel is already upon your life. Or you are here, you are always very unhappy the day nobody passes a comment on how good your dresses look. But they've made your day the day they say, I like your, I like your tie, I like your shirt, I like your skirt, I like this, I like that. You are under the domination of Jezebel if you can borrow money to go and buy clothes on credit. And so you have not fed yourself properly, but you are buying clothes on credit. And so the, your creditors are harassing you. And you are taking long distance to go to where you should have taken shortcut because the person will see you. This is the spirit we are talking about. It is the spirit of Jezebel. When men and women would like to dance around the church because you want people to see your new attire. Thank God for Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry now. Of course, you know that if you dress like Jezebel here, you look like an odd person out. Although we have quite a few who come and ride in the middle, go and hide at the canal, hide by the information center, hide by various places. It is the spirit of Jezebel. And as far as things are going like this, and we don't deal with this spirit, we cannot have a revival. Until Jehu destroyed Jezebel out of Israel, there was no revival, there was no reformation. The crusade of Elijah that will have brought great crusade. The crusade of Elijah, that Elijah will have said, Jezebel, you say you want to kill me, I command the same fire that killed your prophets to so come down here. The revival will have started from there. It did not happen. He said, Jezebel drove the man. Elijah ran. It was God that said, now go back. Go back. Go and hand over to Elisha. Even Elisha himself did not face Jezebel. He also anointed Jehu and said, you go and finish out. Jezebel is one responsible for the introduction of advanced witchcraft into the house of God. And let me tell you one secret. Many, many churches have been completely taken over by witchcraft spirits. You can read your Bible and rehearse it and confess it till they break. Without the kind of prayer that will arise then, they will take control. Jezebel is the spirit responsible for the perversion of male authority in the home. Conversion of the wife to husband. The husband to wife. That's Jezebel. And the man wants to say, Madam, where are you going? If you ask me where I'm going again, there shall be no food for you. That's okay. Wife becomes husband, husband becomes wife. Jezebel incited her husband to do evil. Jezebel eventually led the husband into trouble until God out to summon a committee meeting on Ahab. And wow. said, Okay, we've had enough of this man. Oh, how, which of you can persuade Ahab to go and fall in the battlefront? And the Bible says different spirits were coming and they were giving suggestions. Unto one spirit said, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophet. Then God now dealt with Ahab. It is the spirit of Jezebel responsible for all this. I want you to understand this. There are some men, immediately their wives are coming, they are already shaking. Because his arms too are not clean. He has been caught several times by madame doing something bad. There have been cases. Madame catches uh, the husband trying to seduce the house help or somebody else. And we want to work well, if you respect yourself, I won't tell anybody. But the day you misbehave in this house, I will call your family meeting. I will tell them what I caught you doing. So technically the man is now caged. If he wants to open his mouth, if you talk, I will tell everybody what you have done. Spirit of Jezebel. 
The spirit of Jezebel is one responsible for this revival of revengeful spirit. The ones who feel like you want to retaliate, want to revenge. I must revenge. I must retaliate. <laughs> that spirit is the spirit of Jezebel. Because they have asked somebody to give him a garden. The name of that person was Naboth. And Naboth said, no. This was our inheritance, the inheritance of my father's house. I can't give it to you. And the king was very sad. And they have now planned against Naboth, killed Naboth, Naboth and took away his vineyard. It is the spirit of Jezebel. To retaliate. To revenge. All you, be careful. Be careful. I'm just joking with you. In fact, what you did today, if you did it when I was an unbeliever, you will see the spirit of revenge, of retaliation. Jezebel is the one responsible, beloved, for the modern idolatry we now find in the house of God. Pastors run after money. Believers run after money. This money, money, money thing is modern day idolatry. Modern day idolatry. People don't want to serve the Lord in the hard places. Pastors don't want to go to hard, hot places. But they want to stay in comfortable zones. Where they'll be wasting time roaming around the houses of rich men to pray for them. The spirit of modern day idolatry and is a demotion of your calling. All these are the spirit of Jesus. Moving in, moving in, moving in. So the pastor who is supposed to carry his Bible and study it. The Bible is not the book under his pillowcase. It's his past book that is there. God have mercy. It is the spirit of Jezebel responsible for killing God's prophets prematurely. Killing them prematurely. For somebody to stand in the bus in the morning. Everybody is going to work. He is going to work too. For this time they say, I bring to you the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's sweating and shouting at the front of that bus. He has seen something. A necessity has been laid upon him. The spirit of prophecy keep talking and he's saying it but the same person now God blessed him he bought a car and he had forgotten that unction and now God is saying oh no I regret giving this one a car now the souls are getting lost what is he going to do now he's no longer interested in what God wanted him to do he is a prophet indeed but he has been killed he has been killed before you used to close your eyes and worship the Lord and the presence of God will come upon you. Now you sing and sing, nothing happens. That's a dead prophet. The prophet becomes a parrot. It is the spirit of Jezebel that kills the prophets of God. Jezebel is responsible for this spirit of seduction that has captured the house of God. Somebody gave me one newspaper on Saturday. And the whole back page of that newspaper, they wrote there the evils that men of God do. I began to read. What? What? All kinds of terrible things that they listed in that place. There was even a man that was caught, a prophet, caught raping a girl. And he didn't know that that girl was a relative of a military man. So the soldiers just caught this prophet, took him to their barracks, and they took pliers, pliers, and they were removing his teeth one by one. By the time they finished with the prophet, they have technically removed most of his teeth. He couldn't report to the police. He couldn't cry to God. Because of what he had done. This is the spirit of Jezebel. Many come to the house of God with the intention of seducing men and women. They dress to harass people's spirit. Without seductive dresses, many of the men are already in trouble. And sisters should not be seen to be assisting the devil in any way. A pastor was caught in fornication and they had slept with about five different ladies in the church. And so the members of the press came to interview him. And one of the journalists asked him a question. He said, the way these ladies in your church, they are dressed, is it not enough to make you fall? The man said, don't blame the ladies. But then the seductive power of those dresses have caged so many people. It is the Jezebel spirit. All the panabitting of the body and respraining of the body and bleaching of the skin by Christians is an outflow from the Jezebel spirit. Because Jezebel was an expert at cosmetics. All these kind of dresses, the bleaching, painting this, painting that, trying to deface the glory of God is the Jezebel spirit. When you see a newborn baby, you see the glory of God. 
That's the glory of God. But with time, when you begin to artificialize your body, begin to deface that glory, God have mercy on us. The spirit of Jezebel has penetrated so much. Unfortunately, it has accumulated so many secret prisoners today. Are you here tonight and you are a secret prisoner of Jezebel? Are you the kind of person here you have no control over your sexual desires? You are a secret prisoner of Jezebel. Perhaps you are here tonight and pictures of naked men and women, they are filling your hearts. You are a brother but you always like to be in the company of sisters or you are a sister, you prefer the company of brothers. You are a secret prisoner of Jezebel. When you find that anywhere you go, as a female, you're always happy when people are saying, what a beautiful person is this one. Or you're a man, people are saying, oh, this, what, a, what a handsome person. You are a secret prisoner of Jezebel. Unfortunately, this Jezebel has captured many modern day Christians. People go to church to seek for salvation and for deliverance. But unfortunately, they are caged by the spirit of Jezebel. Look at the book of Isaiah. Book of Isaiah, chapter 3, I read from verse 16. Are we there? Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and they walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes. Many sisters have changed their manners of walking, and the way they will look at you from the corners of their eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Then what will the Lord do? Therefore, will the Lord smite which is cap the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their curls and their round ties like the moon. And there are so many of those ones now. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings, the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods and the veils, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink, and instead of a gadul, a rent, and instead of well set air, boldness. When you apply this chemical in your hair, cut that chemical, this chemical, all kinds of chemicals, in your hair, one day the hair will get fed up of those chemicals. You apply that in your nose, you apply that on your face, say you want to get rid of pimples, one day your face will get fed up with all the chemicals you are bombarding it with. And then the color of your face will not be like that of a chameleon. And instead of a stomacher, a garden of sackcloth, Instead of a stomacher, that is the kind of dress you wear, it's so tight it flattens the whole of your body inside. A garden of sacrament. I'm burning instead of beauty. At the end of the day, this is the judgment for all the Jezebel dressings. I want you to understand this very well. Operations. It's the number one, it will pursue and promote agenda that opposes God. And to him to mother God's prophets and worshippers. It will promote social injustice and deprive the poor of his right. It manipulates and controls rulers and governors. It seduces God's people to sexual sins and idolatry. It makes them to eat sacrifices to idols. It makes them to practice prostitution and to seduce. It tries to grab authority. It initiates and establishes witchcraft that rebels against God. So as far as God is concerned, God has a terrible hatred to all these kind of manifestations. There are four powerful strong men in the book of Revelation. Four powerful strong men in the book of Revelation. The four strong men identified is the spirit of death and hell. Death will reap, hell will keep. It's a strong man. The second strong man you find in the book of Revelation is the spirit of antichrist the spirit of antichrist is the spirit of lawlessness lawlessness the third strong man you find in the book of revelation is the spirit of babylon which is the spirit of compromise and the fourth one you find is the spirit of jezebel i want you to ask yourself questions the god of elijah is the god of fire how on earth 
could Elijah run away after the kind of serious victory he had on Mount Carmel? What was it that put so much pressure upon this man of God? How could this mighty prophet of God turn and run? The answer is simple. Jezebel released a flood of witchcraft and demonic power against Elijah that put fear and discouragement in Elijah's heart. So Elijah ran. So two powerful weapons of the spirit of Jezebel is fear and discouragement. Fear, discouragement. Elijah went away and John the Baptist had to come back in the spirit and power of Elijah. Again, because of the foundation that Elijah had laid, the dancing of Herodiah's daughter got John killed. Again, the spirit of Jezebel has surfaced in the New Testament. So what Jezebel did to Elijah, Herodias did to John. This is where we need to pray. Close your eyes, beloved. You will say this loud and clear. Thou power of Jezebel spirit, militating against my spiritual life, die in the name of Jesus. It is important for you to pray now. Thou power of Jezebel spirit, militating against my spiritual life, die, die, die in the name of Jesus. Mosori kapo la setende ke yaba, ribo soponde ke yabo shente yabaraba. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> Beloved, you see, if this spirit cannot attack you directly, it will seek to bring you into sin, thereby positioning you under the judgment of God. You have to put up a fight against the spirit of Jezebel and her children. All the addiction, adultery, arrogance, broken marriages, deception, fornication, free love. Somebody proposes to you today, you say yes. And I'll come tomorrow, you say yes. And I'll come tomorrow, you say yes. And this brother will propose to sister A, sister B, sister C, sister D. That's the spirit of Jezebel. All the allotry, the hatred, lust, the unclean thoughts, masturbation, all the perverted sexual acts, the false religions, all these come under the stronghold of Jezebel. So once all, any of these things is in the life of a person, the person has to pray hard. When you commit a particular sin, and you find that on committing that sin, the light of God goes away. The voice of God goes away. No revelation. No light from heaven. You better be serious. And bind that spirit. When something is pushing you inside God's judgment, it is Jezebel's spirit. That's what pushed Ahab into God's judgment. When you as a believer, you are now choosing artificial glory instead of God's glory. All the constant explosions of anger in the home. All the baby husbands and the giant wives. All these are manifestation of Jezebel's spirit. All the immoral thoughts and all those kinds of things that pollute your mind. The repeated divorces, the repeated fighting in the home, all the unexplainable marital conflicts. All these are manifestation of the spirit of Jezebel. And there are many things happening like this. Today, what do we do? God has already issued prophetic judgment on Jezebel's spirits. How do we dethrone these powers? Number one, a quality repentance. We need to repent from our, allow this spirit to have a hold into our lives. One thing that destroys people seriously, especially in these Lagos, that's how they do it. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. Quality repentance. Number two, you must commit yourself to submission to true spiritual authority. Believers who want to submit to God, when they say sit down here, you sit down there. The husband they say is the head of the home. That's what the Bible says. As far as what the husband asks you to do is not a sin, you go ahead and do it. But the Bible does not give you authority to start collaborating with a sinful husband. Both of you are committing sin together. No, no, no. There must be authority in the home so there will be peace in that home. The man too should not become a Ahab man who 
cannot undo the family altar. Many men go, go around boasting, my wife can pray, my wife can pray. He will go and be looking for trouble and beginning to say, my wife can pray. God have mercy. Number three, you must be transformed into the mind of Christ. Number four, let the Holy Spirit expose every area in your life that is in agreement with Jezebel. Then that pride of Jezebel in the heart, let the meekness of Christ replace it. We need to see God's divine order of the family as originally arranged by God. Then we need to pray for the anointing of Elijah. We need to lift up our voices in war against Jezebel's spirit. We need to rise up with anger like Jehu against the spirit of Jezebel. You need a level of anger, indignation to deal with that kind of spirit. If you don't deal with it, it's just too sad. If God opens your eyes one day and you see a marine spirit, you see one of them, a mammoth spirit, it won't be long for you to know why we are asking some people not to do jerichoes, not to do attachment. If God opens your eyes and you can see some of the demon spirits, then you can know why we are opposed to certain dresses. Bow down your heads, beloved. In case you are here tonight, you are not born again. You have not just your life to Jesus. Do so very quickly now by raising up your right hand. God bless you as you do so. And say what I'm going to say after me now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from now, I say bye bye to the devil. I enter to the kingdom of light in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, I thank you for your children who have joined this program. Meet each and every one at the point of their needs. Do great, marvelous, wondrous, and outstanding things in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Father, I thank you for those who have surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ in this program. Father, bless them mightily in the name of Jesus. Father, lay your hands upon their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have surrendered your life to Jesus in this program, you've taken the most important decision in life, and I rejoice with you. For more information, counseling, and prayers, kindly send your name and address, phone number, to the WhatsApp number displayed on the screen. You can also send us an email with the details displayed on the screen. And we should be getting across to you shortly. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. As many people as want revival in their lives, bring repentance to the Lord. For any area in which you have allowed Jezebel into your spirit, bring repentance to the Lord. The waves of witchcraft that have been released against your life, the deadness of the spirit, Ask the Lord to forgive you. The Bible says, One to him that maketh his neighbor to fall. So, if by your activity, by your action, by your dresses, by the way you do things, you make others to go far away from God, you need to ask him to forgive you. In Jesus' name we pray. Rise up on your feet, beloved. You raise up your voices like fire and like thunder. Prayer against Jezebel has to be done with power, with violence. I bind and cast out. Every spirit of Jezebel that is confronting my destiny in the name of Jesus, I bind and cast them out. Bind and cast out every spirit of Jezebel. Deal with this spirit tonight. Throw her down, throw her down. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Wherever the enemy has wounded my spiritual life. Blood of Jesus. Heal me. In the name of Jesus. Let this spiritual injury be healed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Every covenant of hellfire in my family line. Die. In 
in the name of Jesus. Masera kapoda sente yabasha. In Jesus name we pray. Every arrow of backsliding. Backfire. In the name of Jesus. Maseke rabo sente yabasha. In Jesus' name we pray. Thou power of Jezebel, confronting my destiny. In the name of Jesus, command the power of Jezebel confronting your destiny. To die. In the name of Jesus. Rebecca Ponte Satiala. Do Rebecca Sapola Boshente Yaba. In Jesus' name we pray. Every circle of vanity confronting my life. Da. In the name of Jesus. The circle of vanity. Die in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Stretch your right back. Father, let your anointing for healing, the anointing for complete deliverance, fall upon these hands in the name of Jesus. Now, if you have any infirmity in your body, this is time to smite it 21 times, shouting, Blood of Jesus. Let's go. Do it well. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Amen. Check your body now.